Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for August 1st through the 7th, 2022. So before we begin, I'd just like to welcome everyone. Um, this has been a very busy week um, of recordings, so I know that you've probably seen a lot of things come out this week and been following it. Um, and so um, I'd also like to welcome anyone who is new to the Angelic Wisdom community. So what I'll explain is, is that uh, what has transpired is this week I've posted, um, an, like the 25th of July, the monthly general angel reading. And then about two days later, or on Thursday, um, I posted all 12 of the um, Zodiac readings, the angel scopes, I call them. So um, if you haven't had an opportunity to check any of those videos out, um, please, you know, look at, you can go to the links below um, for my Facebook page or my Twitter account where you will um, likely be able to access them um, easily. Um, you can also just go to my channel uh, and on, here on YouTube and look up my videos and they should be the, the most recent ones, okay? Um, also, if you haven't subscribed, um, please make sure that you do. Um, you know, select the all notification bell, like, dislike, leave comments. As I always say, I appreciate your comments, even though I don't always have the opportunity to respond, but it's very helpful, I think, to others as well. Um, some of the um, some of the things that you take away from the experience um, is likely um, of great benefit to someone. So um, if you're shy about leaving comments, please don't feel that way. <laughs> Um, and it's also very encouraging to me as well. And um, also just to reiterate, I know it's like a broken record, but just for people who are um, seeing the, my channel for the very first time. So if you're um, interested in having an angel reading with me um, and you feel really called in your heart and this um, resonates with you, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services and um, there you can select the first time promotional offer uh, angel reading that's my uh, discounted um, hourly rate it is now available uh, unlimited this year as this is my 10th anniversary on youtube and so um, whether you've been a client or a current client or new you can use that as often as you would like of this year and I think that's it so oh yes and also just in case you're watching this in the future um, my current my um, future website will be angelicwisdom.org I'm still trying to get my well this is being lazy and I gotta get to work on it so <laughs> um, but it will come soon enough thank you for your patience on that all right so Let's take a deep breath. Oh, and I should say one more thing. The It's a little cooler today, but the AC is on. It might come on. So um, just be aware of that. So I, first of all, I want to ask everyone to just take a deep breath and to breathe deeply into your heart space and to place your attention there. And there's some things that the um, angels are just reminding me of. Um, one, the first thing they wrote is like, I began this whole process of getting ready it was focus. Um, and so I feel like this is gonna be an important uh, time for you in general to really focus your energies for this month. And especially in this week, you really wanna focus at the beginning of this week. We just had a, a new moon on July 28th. So, you know, focus on your intentions. If you haven't set an intention, um, you know, focus, find an intention, um, your 
daily practice, spiritual practice, and really focus on that intention. Um, I just saw the word, and this is weird, and this is sort of from a Lenormand, um, but I just saw the word coffin. So I'm not very familiar with Lenormand, but um, I saw it next to a tree, just the word, not the object. And so it's symbolic of needing to, um, there are things probably you need to bury, is what I would think it means in this moment. Um, it's putting some things to rest, maybe getting things, like getting your house in order, so to speak, and um, putting your affairs in order, tying up those loose ends so that you can really move on. And um, I think the idea is, as I'm seeing the word in front of me, purpose. Okay, so they want you to focus on purpose. Whatever gives your life meaning. Whatever purpose gives your life meaning. And they don't want you to waste energy trying to figure out what that is. Because if it takes you that any amount of time, then you don't have a purpose for that moment, right? So, meaning they don't want you, it's something, it's not, they don't want you to be focused like all out in a big way. They want you to focus right here in the present moment and, and decide what is the purpose? What is your purpose? What would you do in this moment right now with the time that you are aware of and that you are, that is available to you? What would you do right now? What would give your life meaning? And to practice this for, if it's a project you're working on, what's your purpose here? What is it, what gives you your life meaning in this moment? What, what, would, what aspect of this project um, resonates with you and gives you a sense of purpose? Because we're always looking for a purpose like it's a love that we that we've never that we can never have right the great love but the, making i think making life romantic in this way um is sort of like it creates this fairy tale experience this impossibility so they want you to start whatever it is that you feel is a priority in the moment or whatever it is that you've been given to do in the moment because you didn't choose. <laughs> Find purpose. Find your purpose. What is it? Like, you know, like, let's say you've been given this task to do. What is it that you get out of this moment? What is it that the universe is possibly handing you in this moment, an opportunity? What's your purpose? Sometimes you might go somewhere um, to visit and you don't know what your purpose is. And then all of a sudden you discover it. So just be aware or be able to click into what's my purpose here. What is giving my life meaning in this moment so that you are making connections wherever you go. And then when you have that, that bigger theme of purpose, you know, where do I want my life to go? Then you, you can, you can draw from this sort of, um, you can draw from this experience, which is sort of more of a, a smaller picture, right? You can draw from this experience of that connection, meaning something that's meaningful to you, and that's really all. It, I mean, we're looking for a purpose as if it's so elusive. Like, you know, there's something we're supposed to be doing and you can't figure it out. And therefore, you leave your state, you leave yourself in a state of limbo constantly. But everything, every hour, second of the day, there is a purpose. And I'm discovering that. And I think you've heard me say this recently. There's a reason for everything. There is a purpose. But you making the connection can make it meaningful to you. No matter how 
you're you know how no matter how something is crossing your path you know we 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 understand that we're all creating our reality and the moment that we're in will reflect the total um or the accumulation of everything that you've done before and so sometimes that means that we are encountering things that are not those pleasant uh not our pleasant thoughts uh, just to put it in a very simple term but you can still in that present awareness turn it into something meaningful to you so that it's just not the same old same old or that this that, that you are dealing with this in this same karmic pattern you can shift out of that karmic pattern by finding purpose meaning in what it is you're doing having a connection being connected from a place of your decision, your focus, your your choice or your decision to focus in a particular way. You 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 can choose to focus in a particular way that gives or shifts the meaning or the experience into something that has purpose for you. So purpose is not something that just finds you. You're the one who chooses it, whether you feel like you, 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 whether you feel as though you can't remember that you did. But it's, the point is you don't have to key into it if it's not pleasant. You can key into it in another way that makes it meaningful and rewarding to you ultimately, even though it might be challenging until you work it long enough to um, transform. And in that way, you are healing the karmic pattern that you set up. And I know we don't like to hear it, but we just do. So it's just the way it is. I mean, there's no way of getting around it. <laughs> it is what it is what it is. But you still have a choice. You have free will. Now, I'm not forgetting it, so when a, something keeps sticking in my mind, um, when a, a vision sticks in my mind, I, I that means, yeah, say it. So I saw the angel number 805, and I then saw the word justice earlier. Oops. And the number says, you're being divinely guided to make some healthy and positive changes which will help you have a better life in the long run. The sooner you make these changes, the sooner your finances and other parts of your life will heal. So justice in this sense, balance, right? The scales. What areas of your life are not balanced? And the thing about it is, don't just look for financing or career, because whatever in your life is not balanced is affecting your overall um, attraction for bun abundance or happiness, whatever it is you want. And the idea here is that you have to focus on what it is that you want. You have to have a clear intention. You have to focus on the meaning so if you find that your finances are directly imbalanced, then, you know, where are you spending your money? And does everyone, does, you know, and go through your account, like all of your expenses, write them down and look at, does this particular thing like, you know, this Netflix subscription or whatever, does this really um, give you that profound sense of purpose? Does it, does it feed, does it help you to connect in some way to the, the changes that you need to make? Or is this just a part of a distraction? I mean, again, that coffin, there are going to be things that you need to throw in that coffin and then bury it. And it might be attitudes, it might be um, 
you know, I don't know what the word, but I'm, I'm looking for misplaced, um, uh, you know, things that we don't need. These are, are misplaced. I don't know how to say this, but it's like, I want to say just looking for love in all the wrong places. These are these are misplaced ideas about satisfaction, fulfillment, and happiness. And you need to sort of um, release yourself of these things, these attachments that are, that, they're unhap that are un um, healthy, you know. So, but like I'm saying, it might be more than just your finances. Where is it that your life is imbalanced because it says you've been divinely guided to make some healthy and positive changes which will help you to have a better life in the long run the sooner you make these changes so it, this is the first time i've ever read this number since i've had this book it's never come up for me either um or in any reading and it's like wow i didn't know it was here and and so this is like giving you a clear sense you're not making changes you know you need to make them and you're not making them. And you feel like you can't do without them. Or you're afraid to let go of them. So th there's a huge fear attachment to whatever these changes, these situations are. But they're going to help you to heal. They're going to help your finances to heal and shift for you. So justice, balance. And also, another word I would equate with that justice idea is discernment. So, where do you need to be more discerning? And where do you, where is there imbalance? And they're right in the word freedom. This, it could be an idea. It could be your job, actually. It could be your job that you need to change, that you're afraid because you are afraid of being without the resources. Yet, you have no freedom, sense of freedom. You know, wow, they're right in here. You're just a part of the system. You feel like you're just a part of the system. And the system is created by people, you know, I feel like the economy is like tailored, created by a certain group of people, and it only works for them. So it's their economy, their system. And you might feel like you're stuck in your career or whatever it is. I mean, so much of it. You know, I like to call it the matrix, the system. We're, we're, we're plugged in. And when we're plugged into this, to the matrix or the system, we believe that the system or the matrix is our source. We believe that its laws applies. And I'm talking about as if its laws were spiritual, like the law of attraction or something. We believe that it is the law of attraction or, you know, and it's not. You have freedom, but you have to believe in yourself. You have to trust yourself, you have to believe in yourself, and you have to trust your intuition to know that it's taking you to an economy, a, a, a relationship, um, a community, a society that honors your soul's economy, your soul's ecosystem. Because each one of us has an ecosystem that is infinite in potential, in abundance, in everything that we need. But we first got to unplug fear. Fear is the plug. So you'll know when you're plugged into the matrix because you're feeling fearful or anxious or negative emotions because you're not being authentic. You're not being true to yourself. You're not trusting and believing 
in your ecosystem. You're not a part, you're not living life according to your oneness, your truth. And what's going on in the world right now is a lot of quote unquote wokeness, which is being, um, the words I'm looking, it's being precipitated, um, influenced, impacted by your I am presence. And at the other end, this because it's always this duality, right? Is that matrix trying to push back on that wokeness, that awareness? And the war that we're seeing in the world, it's a war about personal autonomy and um, and 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 spiritual freedom you know meaning being it's about being uh, um, choosing to be unplugged it's it's about you you're having a sense that you don't want to feed somebody else's economy or ecosystem or the 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 society it's the because it never fits you and you're always miserable and you are miserable because you feel dependent on that system which isn't geared for you and you can never find what you're looking for because it's not tailored for you. Imagine that what God or source has done has tailored with the laws of attraction and the spiritual laws as they are implemented, they are um, unbiased, right? They are neutral. And they will, they are literally just responding to whatever signals or vibrational signals we are offering and then giving it to us. And the universe finds this easy. It's not, it's easy because it's not choosing who's right, better, who's more deserving or not. It would be difficult to, if the universe had to have feelings about this and get caught up in it and then not know how, then the universe would be limited. The concept of the limit, the universe would be limited and could never offer us anything um, like something as pure as, um, or the concept, the pure concept of abundance or infinite or universal uh, unconditional love. So the, it's easy for it to just respond to whatever we're offering. Because we may not know, we may not remember that these laws are there, but we will, we will eventually, through our interaction, through our free will of m making choices, we will just bump into these laws and we'll figure out, boy, hmm, I keep doing this and I keep getting this. I mean, we all see that. We see, like, I keep making the same decisions and I keep getting the same results. So eventually you say, how about I just try something different? And then you see, oh, I get a different result. And then you get to the point you say, eh, let me try that again. No, you know, more, better results and so on and so on. And so you will, it, you have the opportunity to figure it out. It's not like you're gonna live blindly and never figure it out. You do even when you don't want to know, you still see it. Deep inside of you, you see it. No matter, you know, the you know people that complain, and we all do, but we all probably know somebody we think is a worse complainer than ourselves. And you say to yourself, they, they see it. They just don't want to. 
Well, the same is true for you, <laughs> right? And for me. And so we're not oblivious. But in this wokeness, we're really having a hard time being, you know, playing the fool, playing naive. And now the changes are coming up. There's like, it feels like those, these changes the changes what did i just say these proposed changes are crowding you out of your of your comfort zone out of your think thinking space you know what i mean and you know you got to do something you just you, you know you got to do something and what you might be experiencing is that the challenges are getting bigger or the pressure is getting um, to be unbearable. Or the, because you can see it coming, the direction in which you're headed is becoming so unbearable that and unimaginative, unimaginative that you're like, uh-uh, got to do this. I, I got to do something. I got to do something. And yes, you don't got to. But you should. And the universe, even though it feels like, oh my God, because your ego is like, now I'm going to take that and like blow it out of proportion, make it seem like it's immediate and everything is going to, you know, come crazy. But the universe is giving you plenty of time, plenty of time. So don't even give into that talk. But don't be afraid to unplug yourself and to stand in your stand on your own power. Stand in your own power. Be true to yourself. Start honoring your voice. It is also not very difficult. We just have to we just have to put in that coffin a lot of things that we thought were true. We have to put in that coffin a lot of things that we think that other people think about us. And we use, and it's usually packaged in something called pride. This excuse that also just, you know, usurps our freedom. We have to put it away. And we have to do whatever gives us meaning and purpose. And this practice of doing this will help you to unplug because it's a practice of tapping in to your truth and finding a way to activate it for yourself through an understanding of connection, meaning, resonance, discernment, etc. Okay, so let's take a look at the whew, cards and the Archangel that we'll be working with. And it's Archangel Lavender. So, hmm, look at this. Prepare for soul healing. Forgive and release everyone. So Archangel Lavender um, assist you comes when specifically when there is um, someone including yourself that you need to forgive and it's a little bit of a, a truth you know coming to come into the I can't think of that phrase but you know a coming to Jesus moment I guess is it was it's a, it's a kind of a truth thing because with self you have to be you, you have to confess. I really feel like this is the period we're under. Like, they're giving us the opportunity right now to stop lying to ourselves. To stop making the excuses and making them so good that you believe them too. Even when you make them, you know you're lying. But somehow, if you keep telling it and you keep looking for it, law of attraction works for you. And then you attract the evidence that makes you believe you were right all along. 
I am pathetic. I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. There are too many people out there to, to, for me to make it in this field. There are too many good, excellent uh, people who are already successful. There's not enough space for me. There's not enough money out there. There's not enough, there are not enough jobs. There's no way for me to start my own business. There are not enough people out there who are good people. There are not enough people who are serious about love. It's just too hard to find love. I just, I just decided to give up. I decided to, to, to bury myself in, in another illusion. I decided to, to find some way to bury myself in another part of the matrix. Because isn't that what the matrix is for? Then the matrix is just one big, you know, I'm going to be crass here. It's just like a big old crack house, right? Where you can just get, get high on some lie, some illusion. And let me tell you something. It is like that. You might not be puffing, but every time we lie to ourselves, we're puffing. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're doing. That's what the matrix is for. Don't think. Don't feel. You're a work machine. Just join the system. Plug in. Do your own. You don't need to be happy. Get by. Live. Die. Wake up. Eat. Poop. You know. <laughs> I don't have time. For, for for pleasure. I don't have time for vacation. I don't have time for this. I don't have time. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. No. Stop saying, I got to do this, even if it's something you want to do. It's a difference between I got to and I get to. Because you might be in something that you enjoy but your general, your you know, you're plugged in, so it's going to influence the way you think about things. And you get, oh, I got to get up and go play this concert. But you love music, or you love playing, right? But everything in your life has turned into I gotta. And you, and it's because of the excuses. So when you stop making excuses, you start seeing what you get to do because you are seeing what gives your life meaning. Therefore, you see it as something that gives your life purpose. Therefore, you see it as a path towards your own independence, your own, you know? <laughs> so, um, and I'm just going to read something from this card. I mean, it's, it's, it says here, when this card comes up, it's, it's about you are ready to bring back gifts, talents, and wisdom that you've earned on your soul journey. In order to do so, forgive everyone and everything that has hurt you in your life or any other. If you feel hurt or angry with someone, even though it may seem justified, ask yourself how long you are prepared to hold on to those emotions. A lifetime, 10 lifetimes. Let go now so that you can purify your soul star chakra and she works with helping you to open up your soul star chakra which is above the crown the causal is directly above the crown and then the soul star chakra and then your cellar gateway which is your i am presence and in your soul star chakra all your these gifts are stored but when you're holding on to things this blocks your gifts. It blocks your your tools, right, of truth, so that you don't need to rely on being plugged into the matrix. All right, let's take a look at the um, cards that are coming up for you this week. All right. 
So the first card, the Six of Wands, okay? And I almost feel like this is a card of saying, you know, you can do this. And, it, you know, the thing is, is that when you, when you unplug, you become this person that everybody else looks up to. When you are your authentic self, and they've been talking about this with us a lot recently, right? You step into your, your excellence shines. You want to attract the success and the recognition that you deserve from being who you truly are, not from trying to be something that just doesn't fit you, if that makes any sense. And you might believe that you can't do it this way, but to me, I'm getting a strong sense is that you're gonna find that you're gonna be far more successful in implementing these changes than the ways that you've been trying to achieve success previously. So this week, the beginning of this month, this is gonna be the first day, right? Think about how you wanna show up. And I'm not saying just completely do it, because it's hard unplugging, but find something that gives you meaning and purpose. And then with your truth, it's almost like merge with that. Merge your truth, your authentic self with that purpose and meaning and see what difference you create for yourself. And this is the Four of Swords. And I feel like it's, you know, about taking your time. You know, first of all, you got to let go of, you know, pushing yourself, right? To be the best, to be the best, to stay on top, right? Also, looking at this card in the context of this one, you know, like the spotlight's always on you. Um, you know, there's always this validation, and so maybe this is one of the ways in which we need to take a break from that. You know, um, depending on other people's um, approval and validation. And we get so caught up in that, that it's hard for us to be true to ourselves and to find meaning and purpose in life based on our own terms. I just saw this angel number 235. Your prayers to change your life have been heard and answered by the Ascended Masters who are helping you rearrange your life in healthy ways. Okay, so with this with this card here, you know, take the time this week to consider these changes and in the, all the ways that you can rearrange your life that look at how these changes might totally shift things for you. All right, and we have the King of Wands. And so this gives us a sense of, you know, um, really turning to someone who is inspiring. Someone who um, everybody sort of takes cues from. Instead of being the other way around, <laughs> where you're always, you know, taking cues from everybody else. And so it's just like a sense of... Um, being in your own power, the, the King of Wands, you know, really knowing who he is, um, being very clear about his visions, his purpose. And when you do that, you become the trendsetter. But it feels like, you know, between these two cards, it's like but this card in the middle here is saying, like, take some time to really think about this. Because there's a sense of, are you trying, it's like there's two ways to be successful here. And there's one where you conform yourself to the, the, the economy, the ecosystem um, as it is. And you keep trying, and then you keep manipulating yourself to fit into that, right? 
or you you change this whole concept you set up your own economy you set up your own ecosystem meaning you set up your own goals and priorities you set up your own budget not based on what everybody else is doing but what will will bring fulfillment into your life like you know you may want to limit expenses because you want to pour those resources and your energy into something else and so you're not giving up you're not you're not you know becoming um choosing to live let's say um sort of like someone in, you know less less means or something but what you're choosing to do is to redirect because in this system everybody's nickel and diming you all the time right and we just go with it because we think we have to because we think we need what they're offering and it's so compulsory that it's like we're not thinking we're just in this economy we are all what consumers not a good thing that's not a good idea to be i wouldn't want to and we're all labeled this way but we shouldn't want to be labeled consumers well the word will come to me at some other time what we what we need to become but right now we need to be more discerning we need to feed our souls and our souls are it's not greedy and our souls are never coming from a place of lack the soul knows that it has everything because everything is coming forth from it not the other way around so there's a lot that you might discover you don't need and then could be happy with and you could manage the matrix until the matrix shifts because once we all adjust this to this change then that matrix has to shift because it can no longer um trigger our compulsive compulsions so we're as long as we don't change within ourselves based on the awareness or the wokeness that we're having then the 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 matrix is being fed by us so the matrix is not in control of us we are choosing to feed it so therefore in a bigger small may sound like contradictory what i said at the beginning but that matrix is you too the owner of your own misery <laughs> and so there's a lot here that we need to heal within ourselves i feel like this is about the archangel lavender um is offering you an opportunity for your own personal soul healing to heal those aspects of yourself that where you have told yourself that you're lacking and therefore it makes you feel uh, it makes you act compulsively to to for to find that love outside of yourself all right so we have the 6 of cups and wow this is kind of interesting um one i would say look to your childhood experiences not looking to blame your parents or anything like that but just look to see where because you didn't learn it just from your parents you learned it from a community this what we're talking about where did you learn and whom did you learn to plug into the who who did you who were your role models of plugging into the matrix but we all have somebody who didn't do it even if they had a 9 to 5 job they still somehow lived 
on their own terms to the best of their ability. And that counts, right? So for me, it might be my Aunt Myra. <laughs> um, and so, you know, because she just always, um, she was, even though the matrix that she grew up in, she was very different, you know, from that she left home and, you know, she went away and she introduced me to my crystals. I mean, you know, because she's so interested in so many things. I always call her like Inspector Gadget because if she doesn't know it or she can't do it, then it's not worth knowing and not worth doing. <laughs> it's my expression. I always t tell her. Um, and so, but she gave me that sense of, you know, that there was something different, way different than the matrix I grew up in. So, and that was a whole community. Now, I love that community and I appreciate everything about it. But I'm just saying you have to be aware, okay, um, um, where, you know, of where these things may have begun for you in the past. What did you learn to connect in these ways? But the thing is, it's your responsibility now as an adult in your new awareness, your wokeness, to use those as ways to uh, make better and healthier decisions for yourself. So this might seem like a little bit of a downer, this reading. <laughs> um, but it's something that we all needed to be said, right? We all know that we just need to stop lying to ourselves because the lies are getting harder to to chew and to swallow, especially the ones coming from yourself and the angels writing, yes, 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 yes. But you notice that they're getting, you're not able to swallow everybody else's either anymore. And you want to tell them, but you know why you can't tell them? Because you, you haven't told yourself off yet. You haven't forgiven yourself. That's what telling yourself off is. Forgive yourself. Then you'll be able to, once you're honest with yourself, you'll be able to be honest with them in a way that's loving. And I don't say that, I don't mean loving all the time means it looks pretty. It's just it'll be loving. Because you know why? Loving means they'll get it. They'll connect with you. They'll hear you. That's what saying something in a loving way means. It doesn't matter how it's said. It's that when if it's said from love, no matter how it's said, they will hear you. And the healing would have taken place. And you need one for yourself first in order to, for that to happen. All right, so I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful week. God bless.